Okay, everybody, let's welcome our champion of Live Golf DC, Harold Varner III from Range Goats DC. Yay! Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Harold, you went wire to wire this week. Tell us just about your week. You know, you seem very relaxed. Was it because your family was here? What What do you think was the, was it for you this week? I think I've been playing well. It just helps. Uh, I've played with my family well. I've played terrible with my family there. So that, that doesn't bother me. You know, they, they make the bad rounds better. The good rounds are just good rounds. Because in 20 years from now, no one's going to remember who won this tournament, who won any tournament. Uh, they're going to remember how you helped them. I've always said that. Um, so, yeah, it's good. But at the end of the day, I really wanted to celebrate with the Range Goats. And that's my team. I'm hurting a little bit for TP. I know he's pretty pissed, but he'll he'll – He'll get better. I just, just sucks. I know he's super excited to play today. Um, going back to your family, it was really special to watch Liam take pictures with you and look at you and point at the trophy. That has to feel pretty special to 100%. have him watch you win, right? Very special. Um, I've never won in America, which is crazy. It's my favorite country. Don't kill me, but uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's it's very cool. I felt like I played well. I feel like I get to help a lot of people now. Uh, even more people, so that that's uh, that's what really gets me, you know, kills me sometimes because it just costs a lot of money to help a lot of people. Can you elaborate on that a little bit on what you yeah, mean by so helping we, more people? Yeah, so we have a foundation, and we're just going to get people in that, you know, you want to get people in the golf. But we started this mentorship, and you know, I had two incredible mentors. I had more, but two that just were awesome. They're 91, and they're. 91 and 86 now and I went to lunch I went to breakfast with him a couple weeks ago and just you know I'm getting to the age where I just have to like enjoy every moment before it was like you know things they helped me out with in my life so we sh we're starting to do that in Akron we're starting to do that in Charlotte we're doing it in Charleston so there's just a bigger picture and I don't I just don't want to sit here and explain it because the greatest thing you can do is just go do what's right and I just know those two people had such a impact on my life and I'd really just want to keep doing that for other people that's amazing I'm no very... don't be crying over there chill out <laughs> chill out Jane that's why I'm I don't very like happy for you congratulations you so I'm gonna let Mike take it over from here so I can cry <laughs> Harold did you you won in college though right didn't you win a couple I did years? I did I think I did I don't know it's, that's that's my whole point about what I just said no one's going to remember it's not uh I remember the team wins those are fun anytime you get to share success that's when it, it lasts a long time. It, you know, you just always have that bond. It's why, like, the military, any type of police academy, they have this bond for the rest of their lives because they've done something that's been traumatic together, and they just stick it out. So, so winning in America is, wasn't something that's like, oh, my gosh, I need to post a win at some point in my career? Uh, no, nah, I've never thought about winning. I just enjoy it. It's fun. I love playing golf. Like, that's my favorite thing. I'm going to play tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> Does that kind of ground you when you have some pressure going into the back nine, you're trying to protect the lead, and you know that it's like it's not life or death type of thing? I've always thought that, but if you start protecting, you won't win. I think I've been in that position. So I've had enough losses to grow from. Mm. And, yeah, I think I have people around me to ground me. I don't think I need to do it. <laughs> so what was that conversation with Mito between – or walking toward the 18th tee, it seemed like you were pretty animated. You kind of had a your game face on most of the day, but uh, it seemed like you kind of let it loose a little bit. Well, this is very <laughs> arrogant. I knew when I hit the green, it was on. Like, I, I, you know, I just, yeah, I'm cocky. I'm confident. I'm, I hit the green. I was like, let's go. Like, I got this. Uh, <laughs> but I'll tell half of it. Um, <laughs> the other half, I won't. But Mito looks at me, and he goes, did you chunk that? I was like, for sure I chunked that. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we just laughed. It was good. Uh, Mito, uh, Mito's caddy and I are I get not cl real close, but my first caddy on tour, they were really close. They're both from Australia, and we, they talk a little differently if you've ever been around Australians. <laughs> just saying. So you came to the Range Goats mainly because of Taylor. Was there a little bit of... I don't know, jealousy when he won two in a row there and he was getting, you know, the individual trophies. Did you feel like, or is it going to be my turn at some point? Uh, I think jealousy would be a strong one. Uh, if I'm jealous, I'm not capable of winning. Mm. Um, I've always thought that. 
probably not right. Don't really care, but it's right for me. Um, I think he was a catalyst to our team wins. Like I told you down there, I really, I really want the range coats up there. It's important to me, and doesn't have to be important to everybody, but it is what it is. Like it was cool. Like I smell like doo doo right now, <laughs> but like it'd be cool to, to have three other guys up here to uh, to enjoy success. Um, no, uh, I came because Bubba flew to Charlotte and he was like, I want you on my team. I was like, perfect. And Taylor and I are really close. Mm-hmm. And I was like, word, <laughs> we'll leave it like that. Uh, and I just want to ask you about a couple of shots, obviously holding out from the bunker was, Oh, number one. Oh, hundred percent. Like you said, I was protecting the lead supposedly. <laughs> and I get it over there to the left. I had a bad shot, but like I've been chipping it well. I've been just grinding it out. Just trust it. Trust that like something good's going to happen. I've always believed that, and it did. Because uh, if it wouldn't have hit the hole, it would have been off the green. Actually, I have no clue. We knew, no one does because it was at the bottom of the hole. And in fifteen and seventeen, those tee shots there. Uh, the best tee shots were, were it was eighteen. 18. Those were good on TV, but eighteen was the one because. I had been hooking it the week before, and I just got up there and I just did my job. Uh, and that's what you expect from any person that you hire, that you're around, people in your family, do your job. Like, my wife does an unbelievable job taking care of Liam. Like, if she doesn't do her job, it makes my life harder. So I did my job, and I am so pumped about it. Congratulations. Thank you. Teddy? Hey, Errol. Teddy Fenton, like his call for Good to see you, man. Uh, congrats on the win, dude. It's nice to see you up on the podium. Yeah. My, my question is, like, you're, you're in the middle of the fairway on 18. Um, can you see the leaderboard? Can you see that no. Brandon just went to 11? No, I, but I knew. Someone knew. I asked Ricey, and he told me. And, and was there a conversation with Hell your caddy? Hell, yeah. What you mean? Like, you look at the scoreboard in every sport. Yeah. I'll look. I, yes. That's why you play, to Yo, there 100%. Was, there was no exactly question. Exactly what I had to do, when I had to do it, how I had to do it. I, I love that. That's why you play, that moment. You don't get as many in golf, like, you know, those types of moments, but uh, I, that was mine. How, how do you grind down like that and hit a shot like that and just hit it on the green and know I got a two putt and I got to win, I'm out of here? So you, like, grab a six iron. You talk about how confident you are in, like, doing what you said you were going to do, and you focus on what you're going to do. And then you chunk it, you get a little lucky, and it rolls up there, perfect. And then while you're walking, all you can think about is, like, you're laughing, but you're like, hey, man, this is all me. And you don't get many times in life like that uh, because tomorrow it won't be about me. My kid will be screaming. It won't be anything about me. And, and where are you playing tomorrow? Uh, I think I'm going to go play the Muni. I'm going to play with these two morons. <laughs> right on. Congrats, man. Awesome. Thank you. Carol, just one thing that triggered for me, you and Ricey have had some, your caddy, mm. Chris Rice, you guys have an incredible relationship. You were able to share that moment at the Saudi International with that incredible putt and, like, able to share this together. Tell us a little bit about your re- relationship with him and what this me- win means for the two of you. Uh, results-wise, it means nothing. But uh, you will we'll forever have a bond. Like I said, success with another person is something that's undefeated. Um, but Ricey and I are... Uh, He's like an older brother. You know, he, he, he's gone through some stuff in his life that, you know, I haven't yet, but I just like being there for him. Same way, if anything, I'm going through. And we talk very honestly in front of people. Sometimes people don't like that, but that's the best friendship in life is to be open and trusting. Like, hey, man, you know, like I really don't like that. So there's things that happen in life, and you need those people in your life. Like I said, mentorship, but he just happens to be five years older, so he pisses me off more than he does help me. But, yeah, it was, it was good. Uh, I gave him a wink when the ball went in, and, you know, like mayhem happened. And, yeah, it's just it's what it is. We, uh, we are totally opposite when it comes to life. But when it, to achieving what we wanted to do, we're very common. You know, it's just very uh, cool. That's awesome. Hey, go, Gene. Hey, Harold. Gene Wong with The Washington Post. You mentioned this a little bit earlier. When you're on the green at 18, and you have, what, 40 feet, two putts to, to win, kind of what's your thought process there? And then when you're standing over, basically a tap in. To the win. guy that taught me how to play golf, he always said, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. It's not great, but it's exactly what you need to have to be successful in life and in golf because there's no one else you can lean on. That's why I'm super adamant about the team aspect because I grew up playing team sports. You always have someone that can pick you up. In golf, you do not, not even your caddy and – 
yeah, I hit the green. I was like, I got no hoop. I don't want anyone else to have it. And then when you're the final putt to win it, just you're, you're thinking there as, a, as, you, as you step up to that. Don't fucking miss. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I didn't think that. <laughs> I, I, that creeped in. That was, those are the battles of golf. I was just like, I want to go home. If I make this, I get to go home sooner. So that went in there. And then I was like, shut the fuck up. Just make the putt. <laughs> and last night when, he, when you're sleeping on after 36 holes and coming into the morning kind of, do you just – Say, just go play golf. What happens if you have kind of a strategy? What you want, your, the number uh, you wanted to be here? I or? woke up. I thought I was going to win. Yeah. And then I started thinking about how I was going to execute shots. Yeah. Where are the pins? Uh, I slept with my kid. So, like, I really didn't think about the shit overnight. I was like, please don't move, dog. Please, <laughs> please. Uh, so, yeah, I'm super fortunate he didn't wake up. And, uh, had a good rest. I do the same thing. I ate with Thomas. We were talking about the range goats winning, you know. Uh, that's, our, that's our deal. We eat breakfast together every morning. Kind of weird, like old man type esque, but uh, I enjoy it. I know your your pals with Ron Rivera. I don't know if he had any words of motivation for you uh, this week at all. I've yet to look at my phone. Uh, I left him some stuff in his locker. Uh, <laughs> man, he's been a great friend. Him and Stephanie. You, you. Uh, I don't think you guys know who you have as a coach. He's a uh, he's a mentor. He builds people, which is kind of hard to do when they're making two hundred million dollars. And he's just been by my side for sheesh. Since I shot 81 at the PGA, not earlier, but and I just always really appreciate it. So every time I'm in the area, I try to get with them. Thanks, congratulations. You got it. Anyone else? Great, thank you so much, Harold. Congratulations. Yeah.